Hey everyone, thanks for being here with me today as I try the Kaleidoscope Soap Technique. My name's Tammy, I own Walnut Creek Bath Boutique here in Indiana. Kaleidoscope, have you seen it? I'm sure you probably have. But for those that may have not seen it, here is a little sampling of what a Kaleidoscope Soap should look like. I did go to the soap conference this year and I was lucky enough to be one to pick up a little sample during Belinda's class. Belinda from Love Your Suds. I ordered in two molds and three pull thingies. <laughs> you do have to use a very slow moving recipe and a very well behaving fragrance where you actually should <laughs> to have success. So I'm gonna use her recipe with just a couple little tweaks on it to fit with the oils that I have. For my fragrance for this is Endless Weekend from Midwest Fragrance. It smells really good. Story, guys. <laughs> I am knee deep in trying to plan out a Soap of the Month Club. I'm very excited about this. What I wanna do is have a special soap that is only available for the Soap of the Month. Uh, I'm struggling coming up with fragrances that I can use just for Soap of the Month. And it seems hard as a business decision to limit myself on what fragrances I'm allowed to sell any other time. That's difficult. And I want to eventually get to the point where that is the case. But starting out, I feel like I may need to not have exclusivity for Soap of the Month Club on fragrances. I know this is such a rabbit trail for you guys. I'm sorry. But kind of how I landed on how I'm going to curate my soap of the month is design. It's going to be fragrance and or design exclusive to soap of the month. So the Kaleidoscope soaps that I'm making today, they are only going to be available for the soap of the month club in September. So that's kind of where I'm at. I think I want to do a little surprise in there as well. I think that would be much more fun for a customer to get a soap and then a little something else. It's a good way also to promote other products that I have on my shelf and have people try those ahead of time before buying. Let me know what you think. On to the kaleidoscope. How fun is that guys? So this scent is, it's for September, right? This is just a really nice unisex scent that is kind of uh, warm and comforting, but not winter. It just has this comforting feel to it. I, I, I mean, I really like it. I say that all the time, I really like it. <laughs> I do like it an awful lot and I think it is a scent that would carry through to a bath bomb or whatever, a room spray or whatever else I wanna make with this. I think it's gonna be a winner. These are almost three inches in diameter. They are almost 10 inches in length. I'm guessing I'm gonna get eight bars out of each mold. I don't know if I'm gonna have that many Soap of the Month clubs, you know, subscriptions. I don't know how, how that's gonna work. It's a little nerve wracking to put myself out there and say these soaps are only for Soap of the Month club and then I don't have any sub September subscribers. I'm quite nervous about that. I have to come up with my colors. I don't wanna do too far into the fall colors, but I don't want too much of the bright summery colors either. I wanna to try to find a good mix of different colors to put in here. So I'm gonna work on that. I have to go get changed. I, I, I think I'm not quite ready. <laughs> but when I am, I'll come back and we're gonna make the soap. Sorry for the ramble guys. It's just one of those days. While my lye water is cooling, I am going to go ahead and get my colors blended in. I did the QR code that um, came with everything, but that just took you to a portion of her website where she's actually charging for the uh, how-to video or how-to instructions. I, I'm not going to pay for that. <laughs> I honestly don't think I should have to pay for how to use a product like that. So I'm going to wing it. I came up with this color scheme. I can't remember the name of it. Something about maybe stack of spices or something like that. But this is from Canva and it's got this 
um, not a very dark brown, but just a really, just a medium brown, a yellow green, a, maybe a yellow toned orange, and a chili pepper. I really wanted to use my copper sparkle, so I'm going to pretend that that is the orange. I'm going to pretend that is chili pepper. <laughs> this is Merlot Mica from Brambleberry. I'm going to put a couple together to try to come up with a yellow green and then I have my brown. I'm just going to add a little of olive oil, a little of these and see what I can come up with. I don't want to put too much because again I don't want it to be too, too saturated. I'll be right, I'm going to get this smushed and we'll see what color it is. That is pretty good for a brown. Let's look at the yellow green. Mostly green with just a little bit of yellow in there. Maybe I'll do half and half. I don't know guys. I'll see what I can come up with. I think it needs a lot more yellow. It still seems a little too green for me. That's probably as much as I'm going to feel comfortable adding. It's better. It's not perfect, but I'm going to be okay with that. Copper, sparkle, and I am going to add a little yellow to that, guys. It's a little too orange for what I'm looking for. I honestly don't know that that did anything. <laughs> Look how dark that is. I am going to put just a little bit of that in there. That seems like that could get really saturated. I don't think I want to do that one. I want to do the pretty ones that are all kinds of, oh, wait a minute, what? What is this? Oh no, guys. I ordered the wrong one. I ordered the, uh, well, maybe not. Maybe this will work. I'm having trouble mostly with them staying like this one. It just won't stay center. And there's like a little, there's a little divot in the bottom for you to stick it down into. I think that's to help hold it center. It's not holding it perfectly up and down though. I'm gonna get my soap ready. I'm not gonna show you that part you've seen me make soap. Maybe if you haven't, go watch some old videos and watch me make soap. <laughs> but I'm gonna bring you back when I have the soap all portioned off. I'm actually pretty happy with the colors that I got. I did add just a little bit more of the Merlot Mica to this one. It was a little too pale and it's still quite pale, but that's okay. I want it to be a bit more on the paler side. I'm going to weigh off all of my fragrance oil and get that in all of these. So I will be right back. I really should have looked at a video. I'm going to hop on, on YouTube real quick to see if there's a video because <laughs> I don't remember from the conference how she did it. So I was watching uh, Holly soap making and Holly used a uh, funnel to keep this upright. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a funnel and it's not going to be 100%, but it's going to be closer than where it is on its own. And I'm just going to count to like three or four for every color and just pour. And I think I'm about ready. It's just got a little bit of viscosity. I'm hoping it will keep that little bit of viscosity as I pour. I don't want it to be muddied, but I also don't want it to get too thick on me. So wish me luck. This is already starting to thicken up, guys, so this may be a total fail. Let's try. One, two, three, four. I think my funnel may be a little too small. I should use my bigger funnel. Let's try that one.
All right, so this one's different in that the thing is off to the side and I don't have anything to center me. And my soap is really thick. So I'm just going to do the best I can to get it in the center. I'm even doing it right-handed. All right, last pass, guys, last pass. I'm gonna call it good. Okay, before I waste any more time, I'm gonna pull. And the, I think the trick is to pull straight up. I'm just kind of slow. Let the soap have a chance to do what it's gonna do. All right, <laughs> what a mess, but it it was better than I thought as far as just the making of, it wasn't difficult and I think it did, I did pretty good as far as just the process. <laughs> what it looks like on the inside is a, anybody's guess, probably gonna let these sit for a couple days before I unmold them, make sure they're good and hard. So I'll bring you back. It has been 48 hours or so, I did, uh, I don't think they were quite ready yesterday, so I did want to give them an extra day in the mold. I just was able to set them on the back counter and then just put a heavy blanket over them and kind of around them, and that's as best as I could do as far as keeping the heat in and forcing gel phase. It's very soft still, guys. Quite, quite soft. I'm tempted to let them sit here for another day or so and firm up. I think I will because I think if they're so soft when I cut them, it'll muddy up the colors when I actually put the wire through it. So I'm stopping today. I'm going to be patient. Check that out, guys. I'm going to be patient. I'm just going to give these maybe, this is Sunday night, so maybe Tuesday. I'll come back down here when it's my half day and I will be right back for you, for me, you know. It's another 48 hours of waiting. Let's see. Cut off the janky edge here. Oops, that's kind of loud. All right, that's kind of cool. Can you see that? All right, I'm trying to figure out if I want to go like an inch or maybe a little more. Let me see how long it is. The advantages of being an orthotic fitter is I always have tape everywhere at all times. All right, so this is eight, almost eight and a half. I could get a good eight out of it if I did one inch. I just wonder how big that's gonna be. And I think I have my tape here set for one inch. Okay, that is just a just a tiny bit more than an inch. Oh, look at that, guys. Okay. Ooh, that one's a neat one. 
I'm going to weigh one. So that's really only 3.75 ounces. I don't, I, I think, I know I've just wasted two of them, but I really think I need to go bigger. So I'm going to go, I want to weigh at least four ounces. So I think I'm going to go to one and a quarter ounces or inches. Oh, I got a little mess up right there. So that's one and a quarter. Let's weigh this one. Well, that's 4.65. So that's quite a bit bigger. <laughs> a quarter of an inch, does it? It, it went quite a bit. I'm just going to go a little shy of, of where I was at. I just think it's kind of big. All right. So that side's not so good, but this side looks really neat. I really messed up my black right there, didn't I? My sample. All right. Let's cut this and see what this one looks like. I actually got a little soda ash on this one right up here. That's the only spot for it. Ooh, that's neat. It's kind of neat. Oh, I like that one, even though it's not very distinct. I, I mean, I like it. Totally could do better. So totally didn't do this perfectly, all that good stuff. But I didn't expect to my first time trying. This is not an easy technique to do. So I didn't expect it to be perfect. But I'm, so I'm not really too upset with it. I think I did pretty good, guys. All right. Let's see, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, with two being a little bit small. So 12 normal size and two smaller size. I'm going to wait another day or two because it's freezing down here. 64. I mean, it's like 90 degrees outside and I come down here and I just freeze. I'm going to give myself a day or two and then we'll come back. All right, let's talk about the kaleidoscope. I really like it. I think it's a fun technique. Here is a couple close-ups that I just grabbed really quickly. Uh, there is a spot right here that's kind of, kind of messed up. My pores were not dead center. And I can see where getting your pores dead center really makes a difference in this technique. Uh, like I'm, I'm, I'm brown heavy on this side where this side looks perfect. Uh, same thing on this side. I'm pink heavy on this side. Uh, so you're not seeing all the, the lines as in opposed to you can see every line that she used, every color. So that, that wasn't a really good one. This one I think may have been towards the top. It's not a very good one either. Uh, there's like zero brown in there. I'm really happy with how the colors turned out as far as my color swatch that I was going for. I think I did a pretty good job on the colors. All in all, I'm really happy with them. The scent... So the, the picture on the website has a very summery, beachy picture to it. It's like a, a, I don't know, a drink on the beach or something like that. It, Endless Weekend, I get a more of a less of a summer vibe and more of like, let's get into the fall vibe. I, it's really nice. It played very well. I like the scent. It's a good scent. It, it just doesn't, the picture throws me because I don't, I don't, get that <laughs> from this scent. All right, guys. So there you go. My very first kaleidoscope technique, guys. I think I did all right. I'm not, I'm not, I, I mean, obviously <laughs> there is room for improvement, but you know, look at that. That's a good one. I think I did pretty good for my first time. I'm happy. This is currently very into June and I will not post this video until probably mid-September. Right now it's like 
hot. <laughs> I'm kind of ready for September. <laughs> There's a reason that I'm not going to post this until September. Uh, hopefully you will know that reason before you see this video. So welcome fall. I'm looking forward to it already. <laughs> okay, let me know what you think. I hope you liked the video. I hope you stay tuned for the next one. Give me a thumbs up if you did like it and give me a thumbs down if you didn't. That's all right. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.